Hello, everyone, and welcome to another well delightful interview. I'm joined now here with Brian Holm or Brian Holm from Decona Quickstep, and great to have you here, Brian. And uh, it's been quite a chaotic Tour de France this year already in the early stages, but it seems like your Decona Quickstep have kept out of harm's way, if you will. Yes, I mean, uh, starting in Bretagne, in France, small roads, narrow roads, corners, small climbs. I mean, we knew it before, it just would be chaotic. Would this, it should not surprise anybody at all. And it seems like every year, the last 50 years, every year we say it's going to be worse, 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 worse. Just the first week of Tour de France is always chaotic. Okay, to be honest, this year was maybe a tiny little bit worse. <laughs> I agree, but I mean, Tour de France always be Tour de France. And I think it was a very good start of the Tour, with uh, at least uh, through the glasses of uh, the Kuning Quick Step, with Alaphilippe winning as a world champion. Wow, it was good for cycling, especially for French cycling, I suppose. Next day, with uh, uh, Mathieu van der Poel, Mutti Bretagne, uh, he made also a big number for the history books, what well, was a good win, and uh, his teammates, again, Melier did it the day after. What was, I thought Calapuan have a good shot. Uh, Sagan, when you saw him crashing, he never ever, ever let the handlebar go. He, he holds his handlebar, I mean, for 20 meters sliding on the tarmac and uh, jumping on the bike again. I mean, if you worse than the Peter Sagan fan club, you probably would be after you saw that crash. Holy shit, <laughs> it was nice. And uh, next sprint, everybody was talking who could win, Melier, Alpecin, you know, a lot of good sprinters. And uh, then we got a uh, calf, you know, and uh, he won the uh, Fougere in uh, 2015, I think, last time. And uh, wow, he did it again, didn't he? And uh, I think friends and enemies that was happy for that win. I mean, that was a good story. I think it was one of the biggest comeback I can remember in cycling. I remember Freddie Martins in uh, 81, when he came back also at the Tour de France after being uh, out only one year. But Freddie Martins came back in uh, for Sonair team in 81 was also a good story. So uh, I think Cavs victory that was also for for the history books. I mean, he been he rock bottom uh, a few years. A lot of people doubted if he could, if he would ever come back. And uh, to see him winning the uh, beating the young kids, that was a uh, that was sort of a fairy tale. Eh? I mean, it must have been quite special for you as well, since you two know each other so well and. Yeah, of course. I mean, I always thought he could win. I mean, when like Cap, when you're winning uh, 30 stages like he did, it, it, you wouldn't stop winning from one way, year to another. I knew something was wrong with his body. Of course, he got the Epstein bar. He did struggle, you know. And with Cap, of course, as a also in his head, right? And uh, I know his son, Aldis, we call him Dr. Zivago. He always said if he could fix his head, he's going to win again. And uh, well, it worked out, didn't it? And to answer your question, yeah, well, it was nice to see him. We saw a lot, lot of wins. I saw, yeah, of course, winning 30 Tour de France stages, 49 Grand Tour stages. We saw him becoming world champion. But even the day after now, I mean, after when you say something, after a win like that, you would be quite emotional. But uh, I still think for me, that was the biggest victory from Cav ever. And uh, today we've had, uh, well, for us Danish people, Danish cycling fans, it's been quite, okay, we didn't take the stage win, uh, that went to uh, Tade Pogaccia, but it seems like the Danish generation right now, they're one of the best ones that we've seen in a while since back when you were racing with uh, a lot of them in the top 12 today. Yeah, we felt it. I just saw it also like with uh, the go. You, you you saw it like, well, where did he come from? You know, how did he do that? You know, he's uh, supposed to be a climber in Kavabatsali. He could sprint. He won two bunch sprinters. Okay, uphill. Uh, he could uh, time trial already in UAE. He got the strong Kasper Asker in Little Bjerg, Sean Krav. 
Magnus Kort, who even rode in the rain, was quite wet when he was on the course. And uh, I think for mo one moment I checked the results and we was like, uh, or they was like five Danes in top ten in Tour de France. Uh, I think in my generation we was never five guys at the start of Tour de France, and now there was five guys top ten. So though they're, they're doing quite good, the kids. So, I mean, you've both been a rider and a uh, sports director at the Tour de France as well. What is it like to ride? It's been described as a roller coaster. And uh, is it, it is it the pinnacle of cycling to ride as well? Oh, of course, Tour de France is where you want to go. I mean, I spoke to Kava after two days, of course. Sometimes it's maybe cross your mind, you're saying, you're thinking, you're saying to yourself, what I'm doing here? Do you do really do that, you know, like without somebody forcing me? But you know, also we got a short term memory. You go to bed at night and you always think tomorrow I gonna beat them to tomorrow I gonna win. So uh, I mean I think every cyclist should ride to the France once in their life. But hand uh, you know, hand on my heart I can say like I never liked it to be there. But it's not like you had to be there to sign the contract for the year after. You need the dream to think you're going to win a stage, you know, it's the biggest, you know. So always like in the team, if you are selected to go there in the team of 30 riders, uh, you're in top eight, that shows you're a pretty good cyclist. So it's a lot of prestige to go in there also. And even maybe when it's sometimes almost too hard. I mean, we got 21 stages. And I can promise you, a few you're going to regret <laughs> you went there because it's going to be so much pain. You're going to suffer so much. You're going to have so many crashes. It's just be a nightmare, you know, and uh, it's going to be some very, very long days. And uh, but of course, we're dreaming about the, the stage win. So, well, you've also been a sports director, uh, a number of Tour de France's as well. Was it uh, very hectic to even be a sports director for three weeks as well? I mean, being a sports director, that's of course depends which team you're in, how they're performing. I wouldn't call it hectic. I mean, life is what you make it, isn't it? I mean, the first day could be a bit long. Then you get into a certain rhythm. You know what you're doing. You're making program for the day after. You have the, the meetings about the tactic. Uh, with I was always with good team, team mobile, uh, high road, quick step. You got good sonneurs, good mechanic, you know, good bosses, good colleagues. So, I mean, I would call it hectic. But of course, you're busy. You're busy. You wouldn't find. It's hard to find one hour if you're going to go for a run or some spare time. So it's just not going to happen. So you're going to be focused. But uh, of course, it's a... Uh, hundred times harder to be a cyclist. I must admit, I do miss uh, your your interviews on the Afton Tour in Denmark. It was always a lot more fun when you were on them. Um, but, uh, <laughs> and we also miss the beard as well. Uh, oh, <laughs> yes. uh, but in terms of Dick Hearn and Quicks, though, Kesper Eskain actually said at the Nationals with Fittel.deco that uh, you were going for the green jersey once again, but he didn't say which rider. That's what I was always thinking about because Julian Philippe and Cavendish are up there. But is that still the target for the team? Well, you always go after the green jersey, don't you? <laughs> you you spent. Uh, it would be silly not to do it. I mean, you saw La Philippe, you know, yesterday. He didn't. Really, he had the green jersey. He didn't really sprint. And you're going to ask why didn't he sprint? Maybe because he wanted to have a fast arrow suit today because the green jersey is from ASO, the organization. And uh, he would prefer the the, uh, the dress from uh, from Mark Sport, our sponsors from Specialized. And uh, well, okay, it didn't really work out. He didn't go that fast, but, but you have a plan. But normally you always go for the green jersey because uh, you can be number three, four, then somebody got six, somebody break the color bone. So you never really give up on the green jersey. Just continue, you're doing the intermediate sprint, you may be becoming third, fourth, fifth, but the points keep on coming and then a few states win. If it's worked, uh, then you 
probably go for it. Like last year with Bennett, Sagan was a big battle. And uh, okay, Bennett, you won that one. And uh, yeah, finally, of course, next year, uh, the Tour de France is coming to Denmark. And uh, how big of an occasion do you think that's going to be for Danish cycling as well? Uh, Tour de France coming to Copenhagen. That's going to be big. It's going to be bigger than people expect. I mean, that's not going to be a little uh, Kermes, little circus coming to down, town. That's going to be the bloody Olympic ending in Copenhagen, center of Copenhagen. You know, that's uh, that's going to be big. Uh, I think people are going to be carried away with it, of course. Somebody got to hit it also. It's always like then when you shut down, like a capital like Copenhagen. Uh, so not everybody going to love it, but I think uh, people on the streets, uh, people on the roads, spectators, they're going to be surprised how big the Tour de France is. Good thing about cycling, you're always getting close to your heroes. You can almost touch them. You shouldn't do it. Be here. You know, stay away. We saw what happened. On the second stage with with the <laughs> lady, yeah, with, with, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, I was a little bit silly, wasn't it? But after all, I think she's punished enough. To leave the lady alone. We got the message. That was foolish thing she did. But uh, I saw today the French police arrested her like she was on Al Capone. But uh, <laughs> I mean was a mistake, but then the, the crime wasn't bigger than that, okay? But uh, I, just, I forgot your question about <laughs> Tour de about yeah. Tour de France coming to, to yeah. No, it's, it's going to be nice. It's going to be nice, you know. I quit going to the Tour two or three years ago because I was fed up with the Tour. I've done it more than 30 times. And then I sent to bloody Copenhagen. I cannot stay away from the Tour. <laughs> The tour is coming for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's chasing me. I got a stalker. <laughs> oh, well, uh, thanks very much for this, Brian. I uh, really appreciate this. And uh, yeah, we'll look out for you at the Post Denmark Noor uh, Afton tour. Hopefully, you'll be there and uh, yeah, provide some entertainment there. So, thanks very much for that. Enjoy. Have a good evening. Hello to the family. Mm-hmm.